Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon presented by Disney Parks. It's Washington State and number 23, Gonzaga. Only 75 miles separate these two schools and they meet tonight in Spokane for an early season non-conference showdown. Dave Pash and Doris Burke, at least 25 consecutive hours of college basketball. What are you looking forward to most of all? Well, before we're done, Mike Krzyzewski could stand alone atop the all-time wins list. That'll be an emotional evening for him if he does it. You've got Kansas, Kentucky, and New York City. It doesn't get better than that. I'm ready. We're at one of the great venues in college basketball, and they're definitely ready. And yeah, bringing the house down. Back for our one on one segment. Each team doors looks to score in different ways. Yeah, their respective challenges for Gonzaga. It's all about the front court, led by senior Robert Sacri. Seven foot, 260 pounds of offensive rebounding terror. And Washington State is perimeter oriented. Basil Aiden is an explosive shooter. And Reggie Moore has got to be a cool head in what is a tough environment. 22 wins for Washington State last year, and they hammered Gonzaga. 81-59, you mentioned Aiden Moore. They'll be joined by Capers, Modem, and Enquist, who makes his second career start. Gonzaga, 14 consecutive 20-win seasons. And the starters for the Zacks tonight, we talked about Zachary. Harris will join him along with Hart, making his second career start. Carter and Pangos, his first career start. He's an excellent shooter from Canada. Hour one, set to tip off. Gonzaga ranked 23rd in the country. They are picked to win the West Coast Conference. Washington State hopes to be a challenger in the Pac-12. And here is Pangos. Getting his first start for Gonzaga. Washington State opens in a zone. This took Gonzaga a bit by surprise a year ago. It won't this evening. And Pangos, we mentioned, can shoot the ball and miss there, but Zachary with an offensive rebound. He averaged six boards per game a year ago. Carter got his own miss. Already a couple of offensive rebounds. Gonzaga played a game on Friday night. Beat Eastern Washington and had 22 offensive rebounds in that game. Here's Pangos trying again. This time he hits. First thing Washington State did when they arrived at the McCarthy Center last night was a rebounding drill for exactly that reason. It is imperative they keep Gonzaga off the glass. Well, that possession was almost a full minute for Gonzaga. Aiden had trouble with the handle. Able to keep possession and dump it off. And a foul inside as Zachary went for the block on Brock Modem. Mark Few is in his 23rd year on the Gonzaga staff. He coached his 400th game on Friday. All-time winning as coach at Gonzaga. You think, Doris, about this day and age when a lot of coaches are looking for the next best thing, as you see Ken Bone in his third year at Washington State. Mark Few has stayed at Gonzaga. He's had a lot of opportunities to leave, but he's obviously been able to recruit, and they've been to the NCAA tournament 13 straight years. Well, he's got a role. He's second winning as active coach by percentage, sandwiched between Roy Williams and Jamie Dixon. He's been here 23 years total, and they've got it rolling, and it fits him. I think it suits him perfectly. Gonzaga working the perimeter, trying to get Zachary open, as Pangos has hit two threes already. Well, Mark V told us today he wanted to start Pangos because he felt that he could get him off to a good start, get the crowd going. And hit some outside shots. He's done just that. Here is Aiden. And good defense by the Bulldogs. Now Modem on the baseline. Lost it to Sacri. Pangos will let it fly again. This time he's off the back rim. But good play by Hart to get the steal. 
See, people will wonder why Mike Hart's in the starting lineup. Well, he's a guy who just makes those kinds of plays. And if you're Mark Few, you just think, I've got to have him on the floor. Here's Harris from downtown. No. And Aiden with a rebound. I think that's smart. I think the guards out of that zone in particular can go down and on those long, high rebounds contribute and help the interior game. Five of the six field goal attempts already for Gonzaga have been from behind the arc. Washington State still looking for its first field goal. Moore forced that one up, could not drop it in over Pangos, and it's tracked down by Hart. And another three-point try. And an offensive rebound for Zachary. Well, you can see philosophically Washington State is saying, okay, we're going to give you the perimeter jump shot. They're paying an awful lot of attention to this guy. And Zachary called for the offensive foul hook. The defender, that's two on him already. Well, they're shooting perimeter jump shots mostly because there's a lot of attention around the interior guys. They're trying to put at least one and a half around Zachary, and that lets you have uncontest uncontested jump shots. And this young man is in the starting lineup because he shoots it so well. Meanwhile, Doris Zachary on the bench with those two fouls. Well, he was looking to get Sam Dower some more minutes. Yeah. It is by necessity now. Yep. At three points on Friday. Averaged eight points per game last year as a freshman. Aiden trying to go baseline. And able to float one off the backboard that won't go. And Pangos hustling out of there with it. Three on two, Gonzaga. Here's Harris with the catch and the stop. Eight to one, Washington State has gone more than four minutes without a field goal. The only point by Modem at the free throw line. Papers on the baseline, into traffic, and he stepped out of bounds, turned it over. Well, you lose a first round draft choice in Clay Thompson for Washington State, and Gonzaga is at home. They're confident. They're looking for revenge, and Harris leaves no doubt. Trip through the Palouse, 75 miles from Pullman to McCarthy Athletic Center in Spokane, where Gonzaga is 90 and six since it opened the building in 2004-2005. Now Washington State has dominated the series, which goes back to 1907. And we talked about the game last year, 22-point win in Pullman, but you know, the story of that game really was Clay Thompson. And he ended up becoming the 11th pick in the draft by Golden State. And so far, Washington State missing him. They don't have a field goal yet. Only point coming to the foul line. And if they're going to, you know, make a run at winning this basketball game, Robert Sacre is on the bench with two early fouls, and he is the dominant low box player, the one that they spent much of their time talking about in terms of their scout. So now is the time for this team that's sort of reshaping itself without Thompson to make a little push here. So far, Pangos has accounted for all three field goals, got an assist, and hit two three-point shots. And a foul called here on Gonzaga. Washington State got a steal. And then Dower picking up the foul, his first. Take a look at tonight's side-by-side, -side, brought to you by Brother Printers. Washington State losing two of its top three scores from last year. Gonzaga, meanwhile, returning five of its top six. Well, exactly my point. Without D'Angelo Castro and without Clay Thompson, now you need to turn and accept responsibility for Faisal Aiden and your Reggie Moore. Now, Gonzaga did lose Stephen Gray, their leading scorer from a year ago, as Aiden gets the first field goal for Washington State, and it comes after more than five minutes of game action. Angos will shoot another three, his third triple already. High hands, you've got to have high hands. 
the guy's made a couple threes in your face already. How your hand cannot be up and contest and close enough to at least make him think about it. Contact on the baseline, and a blocking foul is called on Mike Hart. Well, there has been a long line of terrific guards at Gonzaga, and Pangos has certainly proven to be an exceptional shooter out of the gates in his first year. Now well, Gonzaga hit three three-point baskets in their opener door as Pangos with three three-point baskets already in this game. Meanwhile, Hart picking up the foul is first and the fourth on Gonzaga. No fouls yet on the Cougars. Here's Aiden off the bounce, got the defender in the air. And gets the roll. Gary Bell, a freshman from Kent Washington, into the game for Gonzaga. Thanks have a good mix of talented veterans as well as freshman Pangos and Bell on the floor together right now, both in their first seasons at Gonzaga. And the shot clock inside of 10. Here's Dower down low. Can't bank it in. And boarded by Enquist. Enquist was working incredibly hard on the defensive end there. Moore trying to spin it in. And he's way off the mark. Cleared by Elias Harris. Here's Carter down the lane. Offensive foul is called. They got the restricted area now in college basketball. First year of that. Let's see if the defender was indeed outside the restricted area when contact was made. We'll give you the high angle look. This helps with the clarity for the officials, and he's well outside the box there. The one, the one challenge, while it helps with the clarity for the officials, instead of simply looking at the torso of the defender and the offensive player, now you're looking at the feet and the torso. Jay Lacey, freshman from Tacoma, Washington, who the Cougars are counting on for points this year, is in the ball game. As there's another Gonzaga foul, the ball rolls in, but I'm going to say it's a common foul, ball out of bounds. That's the 16 foul on Gonzaga, none on Washington State, and two quick ones on Marquise Carter. So Carter to the bench, Matis Merninghoff from Germany comes into the game. And Aiden nails a three, and Washington State within three. Uh, against Eastern Washington, it was a lot closer than people would have liked. Inside of six minutes, a lot of pressure on Gonzaga, and the three hurt them. Pango's dumping it down low to Elias Harris, and he had it swatted away by D.J. Shelton. And then a foul called on Shelton on the floor. As Bell got to the loose ball, that's the first Washington State foul. Well, Tuesday, the College Chiefs tip-off marathon concludes on ESPN with the inaugural State Farm Champions Classic doubleheader from MSG, first at 7 Eastern. We talked about Mike Krzyzewski trying to pass Bob Knight for number one all-time in wins in Kentucky, Kansas at 9 Eastern. Great interview, Monday Night Football halftime on ESPN uh, with uh, Mike Krzyzewski and Coach Knight together. And I'm talking with Chris Berman about uh, the eventual certainty of passing Coach Knight. Out of bounds, it'll stay. Now, good Zaga ball. Well, Bob Knight was on uh, Coach Krzyzewski's XM satellite radio show. And before Coach could even ask a question, Bobby Knight said, could you please tell your guys to win three straight so I can stop saying nice things about you? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Here's Merninghoff, and another three-point basket, the fourth of the game for Gonzaga. <laughs> Offensive foul call as Lacey was out of control and Dower stepped in front. First on Lacey, second on Washington State. Well, the threes have been mostly done by Pangos, but a little inbounds by him 